Glad you're with us for the Retirement Education Hour. Megan Mozak, alongside financial instructors, Kurt Cassidy, Dr. Paul Mettler of the Retirement Education Foundation. We have a great show lined up for you today. A few ways you can be in touch with Kirk, Paul, and the team. You can follow them on Facebook. That's a really easy way to stay in touch. Just search for Retirement Education Foundation. And we'll be telling you some great ways that you can attend and learn more about Kirk and Paul's courses. These are taught at local universities right here in our area, including the University of Michigan, Eastern Michigan University, Michigan State University, Novi Campus, and Oakland University. Two-day course or one-day course. This is a deep dive into all things retirement planning. You can call the number 800-240-8981 or go online to register at retirementplanningedu.com. Dot org. Kirk Paul, great to be back with you today. We want to talk today about behavioral finance, why it is we do the things we do with our money. We do some crazy things with our money, don't we, guys? <laughs> we do, Megan. We do. And it's, I think, the timing of this. Paul put this show together for us. And given Paul's background, you know, Paul's my brother is a, he likes to say, a recovering psychologist. So he has a little bit of knowledge in this, in this space. And given what's going on with what has happened with GameStop and some of the other things that are going on in the, in the markets right now, this is a really important topic. I think more important than just GameStop and what's going on in the market, because for so many baby boomers retiring, I don't think they understand the impact of behavioral finance has on the retirement. I don't think they recognize how emotions, and I know there are people out there, particularly men are. I'm very logical, rational when it comes to my money. I've got it under control. Your relationship with money is going to change once you retire. I mean, look, we've, we've taught thousands of people and helped thousands of people through this process. And the one thing we can for sure tell you is your relationship with money is going to change in retirement. You will never be more vulnerable than you are once you retire about your finances, Paul. Yeah, you know, it's interesting. I didn't think about that. You, you raise an amazing point, which is we're going to talk about behavioral finance in general, in general population. Yep. But for people who are retiring, this is even a bigger deal. And, you know, this is all rooted in this idea that, you know, the perception traditionally, Kirk, has always been right, that when people invest in the market, we're rational, right? That the markets are efficient <laughs> and, and that we're in control of our decisions. And the reason why this behavioral finance is booming so much is the reality is we understand that psychology and our own personal biases really have a, a lot more influence in our decisions. And they're not rational. They, they're normal, but they're not rational. And, you, and I think your point is great, which is as we get older and we get closer to retiring, these psychological personal biases are even more impactful. And we're going to talk about this is why planning is so important as a way to manage these biases. Yes. And I, so one of the challenges, Paul, when we say planning to help these biases I don't know that people really understand planning, right? They know conventionally as the financial service industry has promoted and talked about planning, which isn't really planning. And we've got to make sure, at least in the last segment today we talk, and I think we do this almost every one of our shows, what is true planning? What are we talking about? Not a dial, not a probability of success, not a Monte Carlo simulation. What is planning? What are we talking about? So we've got to make sure we cover that. But I know... There are so many different behavioral finance topics you want to talk about in terms of behavior, people's behavior, that we should probably jump into a little bit about what we want to talk about. And, you know, it's funny, Paul, before we do, let me let me just mention we are and have been for almost 10 years teaching seven hour courses uh, through a nonprofit organization called the Retirement Education Foundation. And these courses are taught at University of Michigan, Eastern Michigan University, Michigan State University, Novi Campus, and Troy Campus, Oakland University. We teach it in our learning center here in Livonia. And we also are streaming it because of COVID so people can stay in the comfort of their own home, safety of their own home. And it's a 200-page textbook. It really helps to manage these emotions and learn how to build a retirement plan. And all people have to do is make a $29 donation to charity, and they can attend one of these courses. And if you'd like to attend, you can go to retirementplanningedu.org, retirementplanningedu.org, or call 800-240-8981. 
Glad to be here with Kirk Cassidy and Dr. Paul Mettler. This is the Retirement Education Hour today. We're talking about you on the show, your behavior when it comes to finances, to money, and how that could affect us as investors leading into and through retirement. It's really important, Kirk and Paul, that we get a handle on this, not be led or driven by our emotions. Tell us more about planning, the importance there, and what you hope people come away with this hour. So I just want to say one thing, you know, Megan, Kirk had said, and he's right. I mean, we're going to, I think we should spend a whole segment talking about it, but I think conceptually, Kirk, would you agree that the more we put, we, we write out in writing how our future life's going to look, whether it's where our income's going to come from, how we're going to manage risk in the future, right? Where's the legacy going to, how are we going to manage our taxes? The more we put it down, we have this roadmap, right? I know everyone loves the term roadmap, but we really truly have a roadmap of our future, the less we allow immediate personal emotional decisions to interfere, right? 100%. Right. That's the idea. Right. In mapping it out year by year, when am I taking income from which accounts at what age? How do I minimize taxes so that the life of my money can last longer, right? The less taxes you have to pay every year, the less you're going to have to pull out of your investments every year to live on, right? So that means your money lasts longer. Most importantly, Where are the traps, Paul, right? And how do we, and where do we pivot when we have market volatility, short-term market events, so that we don't let our biases, our anxiety, our emotions cause us and trigger us to make really bad decisions like we see so many people do? Just one example. At a time, at a time when you can't afford, really can't afford. Well, we saw it, right? 35% of all customers of fidelity in march during covid panicked and went to cash that was disaster so when we talk about planning it's so that you don't make these mistakes so that you don't underspend what you otherwise could spend because you don't know if you have enough or not there's so many of these bias and we want to label them and talk about them and 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 i want to make sure these are all be th- things that we discuss in our seven hour courses right specifically how to build the plan Seven-hour course, 200-page textbook, teaching at all the major universities. We're streaming it uh, live during this time of COVID. If you'd like to attend, it's $29 donation to charity. And you can register at retirementplanningedu.org, retirementplanningedu.org, or call 800-240-8981. And we're back. There's more Retirement Education Hour straight ahead. Back with Kirk and Paul. Glad you're with us right here on the Retirement Education Hour. I'm Megan Mozak. Of course, Kirk Cassidy, Dr. Paul Mettler, they are financial instructors with the Retirement Education Foundation. You can get registered for one of their deep dives into retirement planning. These are courses taught right here in our community at local universities or virtually. Get registered today. Go to retirementplanningedu.org. Or you can call 800-240-8981. Search them on Facebook as well. If you're on Facebook, go to Retirement Education Foundation. Talking about behavioral finance today. And that means how and why do we act the way we do when it comes to our finances, our money, our investments. And there are a number of biases, Paul, that you say exist out there and really sometimes are the driving force for how we react to our our money. Tell us about some of these, some of the more common ones that you tend to see. Well, you know, the first thing actually relates to something that Kirk and I talk about all the time, which is people have short memories, right? We always say this, people have short memories. There's something called the recency bias, which is the idea, and it goes back to short memory, the idea that the most recent events drive our decisions. We see this, Kirk, all the time, right? It's the newest and greatest thing that just came out that we focus on, or I just lost money in the stock market last year. That's what drives my decision. We saw this in 2008 a ton. We saw this recently with the pandemic. The market goes down, people get hurt, they lose some money, and that's what drives few decisions. They don't remember what happened four years ago or eight years ago or 10 years ago. 
Their decisions are based on what happened just recently, and that gets people into a lot of trouble, and they end up making really bad decisions. Paul, yes, recency recency bias is, and many of those things you described, the one that I see most frequently, and it's unfortunate because because the financial service industry promotes this. This is what they promote. You know, the whole Morningstar right. system that's right. using of ranking different funds in their performance is driven often by this recency bias, right? The more, the better they've performed recently helps to contribute the number of stars they're going to get, right? You guys, all of you, when you're looking at your 401k allocations, you're looking at the recent performance. Mm-hmm. That's what you're looking, and you're going to get into something that's hot. And, and, and what's a shame, because there has been studies, many studies, including Morningstar doing their own study, that will tell you that their rating system is a fraud. It literally is. It doesn't work. In fact, the higher the number of stars the less performance you're going to have in the near term. There's a direct correlation with more stars, less performance. You ask why? Because in the financial service industry, there's something called a reversion to the mean. When something outperforms and does really well, tends to get expensive, the evaluations don't match, there's a momentum to them, and then they tend to pull back. And so when something is really performing well in a short period of time, it's likely to underperform over the next short period of time. So if we're using recency bias as a tool to whether to invest, what to invest in, this is very, very dangerous. And unfortunately, a lot of people use this. And and, and conversely, the opposite occurs, right? Where all of a sudden, you know, we, we hear that uh, that a stock has done poorly, right? Or oh, yeah, so, sure. And, and, and you never- or sector. Want, or sector, and I'm never going to buy into that sector. And then two years later, it's the hottest sector there is, right? Oh, we're seeing that right now with a U.S. bias. Yeah, that's right. People are way overweighted into U.S. equities for a lot of reasons. There's more psychology behind that. But this U.S. bias is partially because of recency Bias. Right. What has happened recently? Right. The U.S. has ran and outperformed international for quite a while. But we know, if you look at history, that isn't going to last forever. Right. International is going to outperform again, probably in the near term, in fact. So we have to be very careful of any recency bias, as Paul right. is saying. International's performed poorly, so people have said, I'm just going to own U.S. That's a mistake. The other one, Paul, I want you to cover on because it's similar is this herd mentality gotta love the herd mentality it, and, and by the way it doesn't just apply to investments it invites everything, to everything in life. especially politics we we're that. seeing it right now <laughs> in politics we, we sure do we we love to sort of follow i hate to say this we're all we all have a tendency to be a bit of sheep right group think right group think right if, if everybody's doing it it must be a good idea if everybody thinks something it must be correct right and we see this in finance all the time you know we talk to our friends and we hear our friends, oh, they're investing in, in this and they're doing this. At Taking months. Social Security at That's 62. Right. Exactly. Or and, waiting until se- – all these and the, ideas. And the media loves this, right? I mean they feed on this stuff, right? They know that people tend to follow the herd. And if you think you don't, I guarantee you if you look at some of your behaviors, I, the problem is you, – and you say this, Kirk, a lot. We are influenced right, by the, by the things we're exposed to, right? Our belief systems – are molded by the news, conditioned. The th- conditioned by the things we watch, the people we see, our friends, right, our inner circle. And the problem is that inner circle does not represent necessarily the world. And so people often then make decisions based on their little, their, what they hear, what everyone's doing, and oftentimes what everyone's doing is not the right thing. Especially when it comes to retirement and right. finances, because right. you all are individuals. See, our and again, the industry isn't stupid. They've intentionally, this herd mentality helps them. It helps them to simplify what is not simple in retirement planning and investing. They make it oversimplified and come up with these general rules and the herd will follow if they say it it must be true therefore then this friend says it's true and this person says it's true and you're all following what is not what's best for you as the individual right and here again here's where planning is so important right because at the end of the day the decisions you make should not be based on what's most immediate or what necessarily everyone around you is doing it really needs to be based on what's best for you and what's best for you may not be what's most immediate or it may not be what your neighbor is doing. Well, I'll tell you right now it won't be, right? I mean, you just think about different investments and products we use in our private practice. 
how frequently are we using the same things for different people? We're not. We're not. Right. Right? Because every one of you is different. Some of you have more after tax, what we call taxable money. Some of you have more pre-tax money. Some of you are single. Some of you married. Some have age differences between you and your spouse. Some are going to retire in five years, 10 years, 20 years, or already retired. Some of you have health issues. All of these are variables that you can't follow the herd. It has to be custom and individualized to you. And it is truly, this is one of the main reasons 10 years ago, the Retirement Education Foundation was created. The charity was created to provide financial education for those people near or in retirement. That's why we have seven hour education courses that are taught at all the major universities that go through a 200 page textbook. This is advanced planning teaching you how to build your own custom individualized plan. All you have to do is make a $29 donation to charity to register. If you'd like to attend, go to retirementplanningedu.com, retirementplanningedu.com, or call 800-240-8981. And we're back with Kirk and Paul, straight ahead. We're glad you're with us right here on the Retirement Education Hour. Megan Mozak here with financial instructors, Kurt Cassidy and Dr. Paul Mettler of the Retirement Education Foundation. Have you attended one of their courses yet? Well, if you haven't, be sure to register today. You can do that at the website, retirementplanningedu.org. That's retirementplanningedu.org. Or you can call to register, 800-240-8981. Remember, these courses are taught at local universities or taught virtually, your choice. So call or click to register today. We're talking about behavioral finance. That's right, how we behave when it comes to our investments, our money, our finances. I'm learning a lot here the biases that we have, Kirk and Paul, toward our money, the way we view our finances. And sometimes these trip us up, don't they? They do. And I think, Kirk, I think I have a sense. If we could talk to everyone who's driving their car right now or listening, I guarantee a, a large percentage of them, and probably men more than women, I hate to say it, are sitting there thinking, this isn't me, because this sounds like it's there's something, you know, people who do this, there's something wrong with them, right? I think we want to clarify something. The reality is we all have these biases. That's It's actually part of normal behavior, right? All of us have biases. This idea that we are rational when it comes to investing is wrong. So it doesn't mean there's something wrong with you. It doesn't mean that you're psychologically disturbed. It doesn't mean you need to go see help, right? <laughs> it's no, Everything we're going to talk about today is normal behavior, but everything we're talking about today is what gets in the way of making good decisions. You said one thing I will slightly disagree with. Go, go for it. You said that it's not something you should go seek help for. And and here's what I would Psychological say. Psychological help. <laughs> well, well, I get that. But here's right. the thing. People really don't think it applies to them. They, they don't. really think they got this figured out. That's right. They really don't understand how their relationship with money is going to change once they retire. I, you got to trust us. I'm telling you, you guys are going to f- allow short-term market events to dictate whether you go on vacation, when you retire, if you retire, whether you do home improvements, thinking you have time. And let me tell you, from a from a couple of people here who have a private practice that's responsible for a billion dollars taking care of a thousand clients, just in the last three months, the number of people that have died in their 60s, early 60s, you don't know how long you have. And so once you retire, if you're going to allow your behaviors, your emotions that you don't think you have, and you're going to live in denial saying it doesn't impact you, well, I, any of you, right? If you change plans because someone was being elected or being impeached, or if you changed your plans because you were concerned about COVID, if you're changing your lifestyle and your plans, you're being influenced because your relationship with money is changed. Nobody else is paying you anymore. You have to pay yourself. And I'll prove that it impacts all of us, even professionals. This is what we do every single day. You know we're responsible for a lot of money in our private practice. When we, our client, we take care of all of their wealth. Every single dollar they have, we're like a family office is essentially in our private practice. When we construct a plan for a client, and every one of our clients has one, a family office, we spend 20 to 50 hours building that plan. And we are so concerned about biases and psychology, making sure our own personalities and biases don't 
project onto their plans that every plan that leaves our office, there's at least three people that do quality control checks on it. Actually, there's four, including the CPA, right? So the planner, the uh, head of the financial planning department, then me, every plan that leaves the office, then the advisor, and then the CPA. Everyone is double checking everyone's work, making sure there isn't our own personal biases being projected into the plans. Because I think there's a recognition that we're also you're human. We're, human. we're human too, right? And we've been affected by we, things. We all of these per, all of these biases we're going to talk about today. We're not immune to them. So we have to create systems. We may be a little more aware of them, that they exist, but right. we're, we're not, not immune to them. So we, cr- we have to create systems to provide checks and balances. And, I, and, and, and if I can throw a bias that I think we all suffer with. We're all guilty. This one. Is this idea of confirmation bias, right? And I'll tell you, we see this in, in the non-financial world every single day. But this idea that we, we, we all come with personal belief systems whether it's political or financial or whatever, and then we read something that supports it, we then it confirms us so we believe it must be true, right? So we seek out information that confirms our belief, and then it just, we become more stuck in that belief system. And, you know, again, we, we see this all the time. You know, we have to have our own systems to make sure we don't do this. But this is a major mistake when it comes to, fi- to, to managing your money. Oh, it is. And, and again, the financial service industry manipulates and takes advantage of this. They have been conditioning for year, you for years to believe certain things, not on accident, to believe that they have some secret sauce, that they have special algorithms that they can invest and trade and, and figure out what's going to make you the most, like they, they've got the secret voodoo that makes you a lot of money. And so you begin to believe that. And then some of you will even believe that you can do it yourself. Right. Look, just can, to be can, clear, can, can, hold on can, one second. 40% of all mutual funds fail after 10 years. 40%, right? So there is no secret sauce, but you believing that there is a secret sauce causes the game stock. Right, it's, right causes all the crap that goes on in our industry. So let me give you a great example. Am I and allowed to say crap on the radio? You're allowed. Okay. You're not swearing. So there are some people who, by nature, think the government's bad. Everyone's, you know, they're, they're, they tend to be a little paranoid, tend to, tend to be sort of negative about the world. I can think of a client who, when we first met, was convinced that everything was rigged. They were convinced the, the market was rigged, very sort of negative. When the pandemic hit, I remember getting a phone call saying, Paul, see, I told you. I told you it was all rigged. I want to sell everything. That's what he wanted to do. Now, fortunately... That was our only client call. Here's the good news. Isn't that our most wealthy client? It is. (laughs) But fortunately, because we had a plan, I was able to go back and say, wait a second here. Let's look at what we've agreed to. Let's look at the long-term goals. And let me show you that we're going to hit them because we planned it. He was able to do see that enough where he didn't do it. And guess what happened after... Within a month of the of the stock market hitting the it came uh, back, it came back, and he made a lot of money. And he made sure. a lot of money. But what, what more important too is in that plan, you showed that if this continues, we have a place to pivot. Exactly. That you're going to be fine. We 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 accounted for all of these issues, right? right. And, and it was able to ground him, it helped to manage those confirmation bias. That's right, right, right. That is the point, and it's why we teach these classes so that you better understand, so that you can construct your own plan, so you understand what a real plan is and where the traps are. It's a seven hour course. We teach them at all the major universities. We also are streaming during COVID. All you have to do is make a $29 donation to charity and you can attend this class. If you'd like to register, go to retirementplanningedu.org, retirementplanningedu.org, or call 800-240-8981. And our conversation with Kurt Cassidy and Dr. Paul Mettler continues right here on the Retirement Education Hour. Glad to have you with us for the Retirement Education Hour. I'm back with Kurt Cassidy and Dr. Paul Mettler. They are financial instructors with the Retirement Education Foundation. Don't forget, you can follow them on Facebook. Just search Retirement Education Foundation. And of course, we've been telling you a lot about the courses that they teach at local universities. Get registered today. Two easy ways to do that. You can call the number 800 240 8981 or go online. The website is retirementplanningedu.org. That's retirementplanningedu.org. 
Org. So how do you behave when it comes to your money? We're talking about that today with Kirk and Paul. Some of the biases that we have toward our money, investing, even how we view money. You know, it's easy to say that only this only affects other people, but Kirk and Paul, that's not true. I know that somewhere in here, I fall into some of these categories. We all do, don't we? Without question, I I think Paul the it 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 impacts all of us, right? I mean, it doesn't make and and it, and it doesn't mean there's something wrong with you, Megan. Megan, you're smart and Thanks, it's Paul. Just, I just want to let you know it doesn't mean there's something not normal about you. You know what it means, Paul? Huh. And I think I'm at the end of the segment. I'm I'm going to reiterate this is what it means is particularly when so when you're younger and you and you make mistakes with your investing, someone else is making a payment to you. You're getting a paycheck every month, right? And so if you make a mistake, that's okay. Someone else is going to continue to make a paycheck and you have, for many people, time to recover. It is a different ball game once you approach retirement and you're in retirement. At the point of retirement, no one else is going to be paying you. You have to pay yourself. And these mistakes we're all guilty of around our behavior when it comes to money is too dangerous. I mean, there's no do-overs in retirement. They, you got one chance. You make a mistake. You're not going back to work. It's going to significantly adjust or compromise your retirement. And so I just don't understand why people would not go to a, a foundation, a nonprofit organization who is spending seven hours to educate people on retirement planning. I know some people think they're too smart or too good for it, which is actually it's designed. It's not designed for the average retiree that's going to retire with $200,000 of investable assets. It's not as complicated if you don't have resources. It's those people with resources that need to come. What what are they losing? It's seven hours to learn why they're behaving about what, what they're behaving and how to avoid making those mistakes and control that in retirement. That's all it is. Right. Yeah, and and I think the reason why people don't go is because people have these biases and they think they don't need it. Yeah. I hate to say it. There's I so many it. people out there who are listening today I know. who believe they they're immune to this and they don't need help. And 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 part of the reason why they think it is, my guess is they're sitting around looking at their accounts okay. and they're saying, Oh my God, I've done so well. <laughs> yes. Right? Why do I need a plan? I'm like, I'm earning, I'm doing amazing. Well, guess what? Paul, that's cognitive dissonance. Right? It is. It is. So tell us about it. No, I'm a, you're the psychologist. Don't ask me. I've, I can hardly say the word. What are you talking about? No, but I'm going to let you talk about it because if everyone's accounts are up right now. You could throw a dart at the wall and you made money. That doesn't mean you know what you're doing or you're good at. Trust me, by the way, if you don't know what percentage of the S&P 500 is tech or healthcare or... Or energy. If you don't know that, do you really think you're you know, you're qualified to be managing your money? Or and why are you even trying to stock pick and market time? This is a joke. You can't trade your way to success. If you if you think you can, you fall into this category, and you better come to the class. It's about long term investing. It's the investment part is the easiest part, right? We we constantly say that the indexing. It's just indexing. It's not it's not rocket science. It's the planning. When do I take income from what accounts? And that's where our behaviors, our biases get so in, in the way. And it's, Paul, it's, tell people why that they are so overconfident right now that they think they got this figured out. Well, there, it, 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 we're going to talk about cognitive dissonance in a minute, but there is something called self-attribution, which is this idea that when something good happens, it must be because of you. And sometimes it may be, Right. But we, honestly, you know me, it's always, it's always, <laughs> I didn't say that. I didn't say that. So well, I know so, I saw the show notes. I knew exactly <laughs> what you were thinking when you typed it. Go ahead. So there are, there, there, we hear people say this Kirk a lot, right? We'll sit down with someone for the first time and they'll tell us how amazing they're doing in the market. Right. And I don't want to pick on men, but it seems to happen more with men. I don't know why, but there's, you know, they think because the mar- their, their accounts are up, it must be because what they have done. What they don't realize is everybody's accounts are up, right? They're, your accounts are not necessary because you're an, there's something amazing about you. Some of it's luck. Some of it is external forces you have no control over. Some of it's because the, the, the market is up and you just invested like everybody else. It doesn't may, mean that you necessarily know what you're I don't mean to be disrespectful. It doesn't mean you know what you're doing. It doesn't mean you're an expert just because your accounts are up. But that's, that's the reason why when people are listening to this show, they're sitting there think, thinking, I don't need this. I don't need to come to your class. I know what I'm doing. I'm doing so well. Sorry, you guys. Just because you're doing well doesn't mean you have some secret sauce. 
It doesn't mean you are you have like you know the knowledge to be successful. It just means everybody's winning. You throw a dart, as you love to say, Kirk. Right? Yeah. You throw a dart, you're going to win. It doesn't matter. It's amazing, Paul, because even if even if they did, which they don't, even if they did know what they were doing and they're so good and they've created a system that no other person in our business has been able to create. Because I mean, look, Kramer, Kramer, you huge head fund manager now on TV manages is responsible for I don't know that billions and billions of dollars right he's got more researchers working on his team he's got more computers and algorithms built out he's got every ceo cfo on speed dial he can pick up the phone and get them and over since over the last 20 years he has underperformed the s&p 500 by a hundred percent right so not even he has this figured out they'd like you to think they do right. but they don't so what's even more mind-boggling is even if you Let's pretend like you did have it figured out. And you really know what you're doing when it comes to investing. Paul, you and I know that is irrelevant to whether they're going to be successful in retirement because investing is the easiest part of retirement planning. Just think to yourself, when are you going to take money out of which accounts? What's the most tax efficient? When do you start Social Security? How do you know if you have enough? Is someone from the sky going to call down to you and say, alert, alert, you have enough to retire now? Alert, alert, you don't have to change your lifestyle because we're in a recession right now. Alert, alert, a Democrat's being elected or a Republican's being elected or we have civil unrest. How do you know? The investing is the easiest part, guys. That's it. So that's why we teach the class. That's why there's seven hours. This is not just for the person with a few hundred thousand dollars saved for retirement. These are people with resources that need to have a custom uh, in individualized plan mapping out when, how, where, and where the traps are. Make a $29 donation to charity. You can attend any of our courses at all the major universities or we'll stream it to you in your home because of COVID right now. If you'd like to register, you go to retirementplanningedu.org, retirementplanningedu.org, or call 800-240-8981. There's much more with Kurt Cassidy and Dr. Paul Mettler straight ahead. Back with Kurt Cassidy, Dr. Paul Mettler for the Retirement Education Hour. If you haven't gotten registered for one of their upcoming courses, I want to encourage you do it today. You can go to the website retirementplanningedu.org. That's retirementplanningedu.org. You can also pick up your phone and call right now to register 800 240 8981 and find them on Facebook. Just search for Retirement Education Foundation. Now, Kirk and Paul, we've had, I think, a really great show opening people's eyes to some of their biases, right? The way we look at our finances, some of the behaviors we have. We might not even be aware of it, but we we kind of all fit into one of these groups. And this can have a real impact on the way we prepare for and enter into retirement. It's important to know about some of these things. Now, when we look at some recent events in the world of investing. I don't think anyone can ignore what took place with GameStop, right? This really rattled not just retail investors, but Wall Street itself. Megan, it did. And, you know, it's like this, you look at what's going on with that. We can bundle up all everything, in, in, uh, financial show. behavior, behaviors, financial behaviors that are occurring right now, all bundled from this show into that event. And so... I, I want to be careful, right? I, I want to make sure you got to understand, you got to appreciate when we talk about this, I will say both sides of this is are manipulating the general public and there's fault and it's a game and there's partial truths being shared. So I, I would encourage everyone just to think about Robin Hood for a minute is the, just think of the name and their messages, you know, they, they got popular because of, quote unquote, free trades that aren't free, just so you guys know. And they are supposed to be for the little people, us average person that wants to invest in and have a chance to, you know, play the game with the big boys that are manipulating the system. Right. So that's their that that's how they position this. And they've gamified, literally gamified uh, trading like gambling and video games. Right. And they're giving people who are not qualified the ability to borrow on margin and they don't understand the losses are limitless margin 
shorting goes on forever. There's no zero. And the, there's so many dangers with this. And they're building people's confidence with the these message boards and Reddit, right? So, and I, and I want to make sure I take both sides of this, right? So understand, I get that. And I, we want people introduced to investing, but it's not as easy as they're playing the game right now. And you need to understand Robinhood. You got to think about this. Who is the customer of Robinhood? Is it you, the investor? They certainly portray that right? They're in, they're in it for you guys. The customer, who's paying them? You're not paying them anything. So who's paying them? It's the hedge fund in managers. It's Wall Street that's paying them. They're paying by getting the information fed to them where money is going. They're giving data information. They are selling the data information to the hedge fund industries. They're selling the trades in advance so that they can high frequency trade and create revenue. The customer of Robinhood is Wall Street and hedge funds. You are the product. The average investor is the product. You got to understand that. You got to start from that position, right? And Paul, you know, I look at what's going on and if you just understand who started Wall Street bets, right? If people who are following this know Reddit, Wall Street bets. If you look who started, it is just ex-Wall Street people who got in trouble in Wall Street. I'm not going to say names, but do some research. And these are Wall Street people, very wealthy people, who started this for this average investor who's supposed to be trying to short squeeze and get back at the man, right? Right, right. And they're, they are all counting. They're all counting on you having these biases. They are. They're all hoping, for example, that you'll have the herd mentality, right? They're hoping because there's so much media and buzz about this. And, and stocks that are, are worthless going up gazillion percent that you're all going to jump in, right? Now, here's a- And you want to stick it to the man, confirmation that's, bias, that's because right. the game's rigged. That's right. That's right. Exactly. Right. But here's the cool thing. If which can, is true. If I, but, if I can say what's really cool about this, and it goes back to the class, how many phone calls yep. have we received from a client- In our private, private practice. practice yep. Thank you. Yep. Who said, you know, I want in. Not one. Not one. You know why? You know who called me mom? <laughs> that we did have one mom. Our mom my 83 year old mom said, mother. "Should I buy GameStop?" <laughs> That's when I knew there was something uh, wrong. But go ahead. But no, I, I mean, I just think that you know, the, the, this really still goes back to, and I know we keep saying this: why planning is important. We have not received a call. I guarantee you, if you ask the average advisor out there who's not planning at all, they're getting tons of phone calls because of herd mentality. Of course. That doesn't mean. Let me just say, it doesn't mean our clients aren't sitting around thinking, "Hmm, maybe this could be a cool thing." But we have we because we've we've planned for them and we've I hate to say this sort of trained we've them educated edu- educated them they understand they have there's enough checks and balances they know they shouldn't get into this herd mentality. So Paul, the, here's what I'm really afraid of because it's just it, it this is it's it's a crowd it's a crowd sourced Ponzi scheme. Yeah, sure. And who is going to be left holding the bag? It's the retail investor. Of course. Of, if of course. you think. That it's just little people that retail small investors that are driving game stock from ten dollars to up no. to four hundred dollars a share. You're again you, you there's biases. You have biases. There's again, there's a, right. some delusion too, right? right because right. it's not true. And they have information, computers that they look they trigger on the millisecond, literally. And so the person that's gonna get caught in this Ponzi scheme right now is going to be the retail investor. They're gonna be held holding the bag as this bubble pops on them. It's it was, going to. Right. And so and you only hope that, that if you're for people who are close to retiring, I really hope, I pray that you're not getting into this. I don't think I think that I think this is they may be hearing and tempted but I, I think this is more younger people. Uh, I, could, I may I, be wrong. I could see some. I could see some. Some of our. I yeah. could see some I of the people say, who attend our classes. Yeah, I, we've met a few do it yourselfers. Who do yourselfers? Engineers. Who, yeah, they're, executives. They're, you know, CFOs. They're, 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 they're like slung. You know, gun, gunslingers here. Here, here, guys. This is great. We're talking about. Yeah, I know the time. We're talking about uh, behavioral finance. I want everyone to Google the Dunning Kruger effect. We talk about it constantly and we are talking about you, the engineer, CFO, CPAs, the Dunning Kruger effect. You look it up and tell me if you're not guilty of this, right? All right. So this is why, and we're going to talk about next segment, why you must attend a seven hour course as you're approaching retirement or in retirement. So if you have resources, you got to know when, how, why, where the traps are, 
how to pivot so you can manage these emotions in retirement. If you'd like to register for one of these seven-hour courses at all the major universities, all you have to do is make a $29 donation to the charity and go to retirementplanningedu.org, retirementplanningedu.org, or call 800-240-8981. And we will be back with Kirk and Paul straight ahead. We're glad you're with us right here on the Retirement Education Hour. I'm Megan Mozak. It's a pleasure to be alongside Kirk Cassidy and Michael Mazarin. They're both financial instructors with the Retirement Education Foundation. Now, you heard us talk about these courses that Kirk, Michael, and the team teach throughout our community. Don't forget, you can get registered online. It's very easy. Retirementplanningedu.org. That's retirementplanningedu.org or call 800 240 8981. Speaking of planning, Kirk and Michael, that really is the key, isn't it? So yes, the answer is planning, right? And that's what we teach in these courses. How, when to take income from which accounts, how to manage your tax brackets, understanding what's taxed in which bracket, how your social security is taxed, right? What drives the decision on when to take your social security, one of the major variables is taxation of social security and how it impacts the taxation Social Security impacts taxation on your IRAs and 401ks, right? So it always comes down to planning. So before we get into more detail about planning, I, wanna, I just want to pivot for one more second and give an example of two portfolios we illustrate in our class, right? So in our class, as we're talking about sequence of return risk, we spend a lot of time on that. We probably spend a good 40 minutes on maybe an hour on just sequence of return risk. We show an example of two different people's portfolios. And essentially, they're the same returns over 20 years, just in reverse order. So one will start with a 33% rate of return. And then over 20 years, the average rate of return will be an average of 10%. The other one actually starts with a negative rate of return the first year. But over all 20 years, it's an average 10% rate of return. Both of them started with a million dollars. They're both going to retire and take out 5% a year or $50,000 to live on. So what we're doing is we're comparing two different portfolios, one with early profitable returns, good returns early, and one with early poor returns, both with an average rate of return of over 10%. The one that had the early good returns, 20 years later had $2.8 million left when they died, or 20 years later, I should say, not when they died. The one that lost money early but still had an average rate of return of 10%, ran out of money in 17 years. So if you think about the portfolio that did poorly and ran out of money, they had an average rate of return of 10%. They took out 5% a year to live on, but ran out of money in 17 years. It's because they lost early, Michael. And again, there's there's just no recovering from that. If you lose early, so if you think about it, if you, if you have $100,000 and you lose 50% in year one, you need a 100% gain to get back to break even, let alone if you're pulling money out of that portfolio. Well, that, that's where people get in trouble, right? Think about it. Let's say you lose 27% in the first year. No, let, let's call it. Let's, let's say you lose 29% in the first year and then you take out 5%. So now you're 34% behind. If you're 34% behind to catch up to even, the next year you need 54% return, right? Right, because first, I mean, the shares you're pulling out of the market to live for for, for income are no longer invested to recover anymore. Right, you have fewer shares to recover from. So sure, the market will recover, just like everybody always says, but you no longer have the ability to let the, the funds sit there and, and recover with the market. Now you're pulling that out for income. In fact, Michael, that's one of the phrases that drives me most crazy. So when you're young, yes, stay the course. It's a roller coaster ride. And over time, you're going to be fine. In retirement, you aren't going to be fine. If you are pulling money out of portfolios that lose early, you can't recover. You won't recover. Time won't help you there. You need to prevent that from happening to recover. You just can't let it happen. And people really hate addressing this issue just because there's an element of luck here, right? No one knows what the market's going to do. There's no preparation. You don't know, am I going to retire in a good time or a bad time? The only thing you can do really is planning. Well, Michael, right? So they say, but I could have had, if I just stayed long and didn't worry about this and and the timing was good for me, I'd have so much more, right? And this goes back to why we challenge people. You have to be insane to risk what you have for something you don't need. In other words, look, if you have enough to give you what you want in retirement, 
Now you're just being greedy. Now you just need to know if you have enough and then map out the income strategically so that you don't make a mistake to accidentally outlive your money. Because you're not going to know it when you made a mistake. It's going to take many years before you figure out you made the mistake. And it goes back to planning, Michael. Right. I mean, at that point, it's too late. If you've made that mistake and you realize it a couple of years later, it's already too late. You can't recover from that anymore. It's, it's why it drives me crazy when say, well, I'm, I'm five years from retirement. Maybe maybe I'll go to the class, you know, a year or two before I retire. No, 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 no. It's never too late to retire. But the earlier we start, the better off you are. Because you got to know where you're at to determine what the best path to get to where you want to be, right? And the earlier start you have, You can avoid so many risks. You can position yourself for more Roth conversions. You can position yourself to leave your surviving spouse in a better position. Give yourself more income. You can really avoid so many traps if you start earlier. you got to educate yourself within 5 to 10 years of retirement. And also, the earlier you educate yourself, the better prepared you'll be. I mean, how many people come to the class and then come meet us? And we say, you could have retired three years ago. (laughs) The majority of the people that we work with could have retired earlier because we tend to work with people with with resources and they just didn't know. Like there's nothing, there's no no one in the sky that's going to talk down to you, my son, you have enough to retire or my my daughter, you have enough to retire. There's no flashing light above your bedpost that's going to say, okay, you got enough to retire now. There's no alerts that's going to say, you won the marathon, you can stop running now. And it's not round numbers. It's not 1 million, 2 million, 3 million. Everyone's different. I hate that, right? We hear that a lot. I had to send my mind. I need 3 million before I retire. 3 million, just from the 3 million, you could create over $200,000 a year. Just without pensions, Social Security, which is more than they're probably living on now, right? So people just don't know what their money could do, and fear prevents them from really utilizing those dollars properly. And I'm glad they're afraid because you don't want them to outlive their money. But education, seven, eight hours of education on how to construct that individualized custom plan gives them the f- people the freedom. And uh, I, I, I hope I hope this 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 show was helpful. It's the reason we started the nonprofit organization almost 10 years ago, just specifically to help people to and through retirement. So if you'd like to register for one of our seven hour courses at at all the major universities and streaming online, all you have to do is make a $29 donation to charity. And then you can register at retirementplanningedu.org, retirementplanningedu.org, or call 800-240-8981. Investing involves risk, including the potential loss of principal. Any references to protection, safety, or lifetime income generally refer to fixed insurance products, never securities or investments. Insurance guarantees are backed by the financial strength and claims-paying abilities of the issuing carrier. This radio show is intended for informational purposes only. It is not intended to be used as the sole basis for financial decisions, nor should it be construed as advice designed to meet the particular needs of an individual situation. Retirement Education Foundation is not permitted to offer, and no statement made during the show shall constitute tax or legal advice. Our firm is not affiliated with or endorsed by the U.S. government or any governmental agency. The information and opinions contained herein provided by third parties have been obtained from sources believed to be reliable, but accuracy and completeness cannot be guaranteed by Retirement Education Foundation. This radio show is a paid placement.